And as you close your eyes, just bring attention and awareness to your breath. Last few days, I've really been focusing on the exhale, the release, the ability to let go. So that every inhale can really be full, ready to do its job, the next bit of work. Within that play today for our yoga practice, inhaling for the work, exhaling to release on to the next. Tuck the chin down to your chest. Move the right ear over towards the right shoulder. And we'll just do easy head rocks back and forth here. So a little half moon shape. Let the chin go down as you rock over to the second side, back and forth. Start to really slow it down. And then keep the chin down to the chest. Take both hands behind the head. Push the head a little bit up into the hands. We find this nice stretch from the top of our spine leading down to the tailbone. Release the hands, lift the head, open your eyes. Okay, come on over to all fours. Hands under our shoulders, knees underneath our hips, and do cat and cow. Move the spine back and forth here. Inhale, pull your chest through, look up, tailbone to the sky, stay for an extra breath. And then exhale, press down through the hands and knees around the back, drop your head for cat pose. And again, stay for an extra breath. And then continue with the more fluid motion. Inhale, pull through on every inhale. And exhale, round the back, drop the head on every exhale. On your next inhale, come back to a neutral spine and then take your hands a good foot further in front of you and sit back but we'll stay higher than in child's pose. So press the hands down and forward so you get a good shoulder stretch in here. And then lift back up and walk your hands a little bit to the right and do that same thing, pull back. And then come back upright, walk the hands across the center and over to the left. So we do this a lot, right? But we're already back in child's pose. We're setting the hands first and then pulling back today. Perhaps even a little more pointed stretch through the upper arms, shoulders, chest. Okay, come back all the way in, downward facing dog. Tuck the toes and lift your hips, down dog. And then here, pedal your feet a little bit so that it starts to open through the back of the legs. Let your head relax. Take your feet as wide as your sticky mat. Inhale and lift up to the tips of your toes and then bend your knees pretty low. Shift your hips up and back again. 
keep shifting the hips up and back, straighten the legs, and now push your heels down towards the ground. Full deep stretch here. I think the best kind of stretch, working from our strength to find the little extra push. And now come forward all the way to plank pose. In plank pose, bring your feet closer together. Make one nice long line from your head leading back to the heels. Squeeze the heels, squeeze your glutes. Lengthen your tailbone, tone the belly. Look a little forward rather than just straight down. Stay at the very top of your plank. Push more weight into your thumb and your first finger than the rest of the hand. You've got this, stay here. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's lower flat down to the mat. Take the hands back behind you, palms to the sky and lift everything up. Lift, lift, lift. And then lower it down and press back to child's pose. And then downward facing dog, tuck the toes and lift the hips. Look in between your hands and step your right foot all the way through to low lunge. Make sure you get in your full stride, knee over ankle, fingertips in line with our toes. Lift enough through the legs that you can get your left leg straight. And then pull your back heel forward today over your toes. So a little more flex in the back foot. Working from there, take the right hand up, add a twist here. And then bring the right hand to the inside of your foot, spin the back heel down, walk your hands out for down dog lunge. Keep broadening your right knee, your front knee, over the middle of your foot. Press down and away and through both feet. And then bring it all back in and step your left foot forward. Come up halfway, forward fold. Stand all the way up, reach your arms to the sky as you do so. And then go right back down, exhale forward fold. Step back to plank. Lower flat down against your yoga mat. Try interlacing your hands behind your back and lift everything high. Hands can stay open if that's better for you at this moment still. As you lower down, press back to child's pose. Change to downward facing dog. And then step your left foot forward now to your low lunge. So we're on the second side, left foot forward. Again, take your time, long stride. A little extra lift in the back leg so that you can pull the heel forward today. Big, strong flex, heel over your toes. And then add the twist, left arm up. Action of pulling your left hip backwards in space while you're doing this twist. We'll add in a little bit more stretch through the outer hip. IT band on that front leg. And then lower the hand to the inside, press the right heel down. Walk your hands further out towards that front corner of the mat. Keep the weight in your feet and keep broadening the front knee away from the front shoulder. And then walk it all back around. Step the back foot forward. Half lift. Forward fold. Stand up, arms to the sky and bring palms together, center of the chest. 
Take a breath in here. Empty it all out. Again, one more breath in. Release. And moving on to the next. Arms high. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Step back to plank. With control, lower flat down to your yoga mat. This time, take your hands behind your head. Behind your head. Point the elbows mostly out to the side and lift everything up. If you squeeze the heels in closer, does it help? Lower everything down, press back to child's pose, giving ourselves a breath right in between there. And then downward facing dog. Bring the right foot forward to your low lunge. Get in your stride, that long back leg today, and then come upright. Soon as you come upright, you'll probably feel a lot more intensity in the stretch of the back hip flexor. Try sitting just a little bit lower, and then lifting just a little bit higher. So there's some movement here, up and down. I'm pulling the back heel forward as I lift higher, pressing it further back as I go lower. You can do that a couple of times. And then steady, arms to the sky. Lower the hands down around the front foot. We're gonna get into the second side here. Step back to plank, do a little push up in between. And then downward facing dog. Step the left foot forward. Come up. And again, that little bit of change in the lunge here. And it's really the activation for me of the back heel moving forward, lifting the whole body and back. So we're getting in some stretch and some strengthening for the hips here. A lot of times we stretch, stretch, stretch. And we need to make sure that we are strengthening the hips as much as we stretch. Arms overhead. One breath like this. And then take the arms down around the front foot, step back. From the toes or from the knees, do a push up and then back to downward facing dog. Inhale, look forward in between the hands and step or jump all the way to the front end of your yoga mat. Half lift, forward fold, stand, reach the arms to the sky and palms together, center of the chest. One more round for our opening sun salutations. Lift the arms up to the sky. Exhale and fold. Inhale, half lift. Step back to plank. Lower flat down against your yoga mat. Cobra, press down through the hands and the feet. Peel your chest. Up, hug the elbows into your side, relax the shoulders up and back. Stay with Cobra here, a little change. Look over your right shoulder and then look to the center. Look over your left shoulder. Look back to the center. Lower it all the way down. Press through child's pose, you get a breath. Change to downward facing dog. Let's go back into our lunges. Step the right foot forward. 
And this time come all the way up to warrior two. So spend your back heel down, open up to the side and extend your arms in either direction. Good, keeping the shoulders and the hips pretty open to the side, interlace your hands behind you, bend your elbows and squeeze the elbows towards each other. If you're squeezing your elbows in, then stretch the arms straight and lift your chest up. Okay, little change, instead of looking to the side, think back over the front leg and then send your head down and your arms up. A little change in the direction. Shoulders, hips, more force towards the front leg here and our no-handed lunge. Push through your feet and come all the way back upright. Release the arms and send them out to the side. Again, in warrior two. Cartwheel the hands around the front leg, step back to plank, hold plank or add a push up in between the sides here, downward facing dog. We'll give it a go on the second side, step the left foot forward, spin the back heel down, line up about heel to heel here, and then come upright, extend the arms out. And again, shoulders, hips, totally open to the side. Interlace the hands behind the back. It's that big bend in the elbows. And then just flip so it's your second favorite finger that's on top. Squeeze the elbows in. Then stretch the arms straight. Look up. Change the direction so you're looking more towards the front leg. And lastly, head down, arms up. So the further the head goes down, the higher the arms lift up. Find your spot. Keep trying to push some weight into the back foot there to find stability. Next inhale, we lift back up. Take some strength through the legs. Release the arms back out to warrior two. And cartwheel down around the front foot. Step through plank. One push-up, downward facing dog. Look in between the hands and step or jump to the front of the mat. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Stand up, reach the arms to the sky and palms together, center of the chest. For November, our all levels classes are taking their hints from the yoga hour sequence one. So from the nice heated movement of our sun salutations, we move into our standing poses and our balance poses. We'll do balance first today. Open the eyes back up if they're closed. Take the hands to the hips. Push your weight into your left leg and kick your right heel back behind you. So standing like a flamingo. And with your right heel back behind you, take that same hand and hold on to it and take the other arm straight up towards the sky. Quad stretch. And then change, pull the knee up and in, and hold the front of the shin. Good, everything from this point is gonna be bonus. Flex your foot, look down at it, and try to hold on to the bottom of the foot. If you're holding on to the bottom of the foot, still going for a little more challenge, kick it straight out in front of you. And then pull it right back in and stamp down. Stand with your feet hip distance apart before going to the other side. Lift the arms up, 
Bend the knees, sit into your thighs for Utkatasana, chair pose, power pose. Try to relax at the top of your shoulders and still look past the fingertips. And then stand up and kick the left heel towards your seat and take the hand to the foot. And this is where we're good teachers for ourselves. Like, do you get so much more out of the quad stretch than trying to do the rest? Maybe you stay right there. The other option, pull the knee in and hold the front of the shin. We're looking for a good flexion in the hip here. Moving along, try holding on to the bottom of the foot. And I'm literally pushing my hands up as I kind of push my foot a little bit down into the hands. And that gives a little more security for the kick out. Kick the foot into the hands, pull the hands back. And it all comes in and down. Again, Utkatasana, maybe feet a little closer together. Give it a go. Sit low. And you can come like chest way down and forward to get into the legs. Slightly shift the weight back towards the heels and try to lift more upright again in the torso. Stand all the way high. Dive down to your mat and step all the way back to downward facing dog again. Lift the right leg up into the air for three-legged dog. We'll make our standing poses a little combination here. Step the right foot forward. Go back to warrior two. You've already seen that today. Spin the back heel down, come all the way up. In this thought of strengthening through the hips, you might be slightly closer in the legs for this transition point. Heel toe the back foot in just a little bit and then lift your back heel up and close the hips so that you're in a high lunge, arms to the sky. Open the hips back up, set the heel down, warrior two. We're gonna do it two more times. Lift the back heel, shift to high lunge. You're high enough in the hips that it doesn't feel like you're grinding in the joint. That's that heel up. Nice flex over the toes as you change to your high lunge. And then back to warrior two. Straighten the right leg. Reach as far as you can to the right, so you come into triangle pose here. Right hand down, left arm up. Plenty of work in every inhale. Notice what are you holding that you don't have to on every exhale. Bring your left hand to your hip, look back down at the floor and heel toe your back foot much more towards the right leg until you can lift off for half moon pose. So take all of your weight towards the right and lift up. Combining that balance pose with our standing poses, left arm can go high. Maybe even having fun with changing the focus to look to the side or even up here. And then everyone go back to a low lunge, all the way down, low lunge. Step back to downward facing dog. Give a little pedal through the feet. Let's do that same combination on the second side. So lift your left leg up, three-legged dog. Left leg high, nice full reach. And step it all the way through. Come up to warrior two. Spin the back heel down. And come on up. Hip shoulders to the side. 
Again, I'm using a slightly shorter stride in this Warrior II than I usually do so that I have the rotation in the back leg. Lift the back heel up and then the back hip starts to move towards the front as the arms come up towards the sky. Rather than sitting as low as you can in the legs, stay a little higher as you rotate back open to Warrior II. And then we do it two more times. Lift the heel, rotate, high lunge, open up, drop the heel, warrior two. One more time, lift and rotate, nice and slow. Open up, drop the heel, warrior two. Straighten the front leg. Triangle pose, reach as far as you can to the left. Left hand down, right arm up. Bottom hand maybe on your shin so that you can keep your chest more lifted and open, similar to where you'll wanna be for the next half moon pose. And then looking back down at the floor, if you had looked otherwise, bring the top hand to your hip, re-bend the front knee, just heel toe, heel toe, that right foot in. And then hop forward and up to half moon pose. Weight on the left foot. Lift the right leg at least as high as your hip. You can go higher if you'd like. Sometimes I find that a little more freeing in the hips. Top arm to the sky. Point all the way out to the right toes to make the legs stay fully engaged and strong. And we'll wind it all the way back down to our low lunge. Step to plank. Lower down to your mat. Peel the chest up for cobra. And sit back onto your heels, child's pose. Take child's pose for several breaths here. Give yourself a bit of release. And then crawl back to all fours. And move your hands more towards the left side of the mat so that you can swing your right foot forward into a lunge. And I want to use most of the space of the yoga mat. So right foot mostly over to the right side, left knee closer to the left side of your mat. Turn your right foot out so that your toes are hanging off of your mat, but your heel is still on. So we've got that 30 degree opening. And let's pop up the back knee again and shift the back heel forward to really strengthen in the left quad and go down to the forearms. You can certainly stay higher than the forearms or slide a block or a stack of books underneath the forearms to give you an in-between height. We're here just for a couple more breaths. And then build it right back up to your hands. Lower the back knee. Now shift your left hand off of your yoga mat and look over your top right shoulder, your top shoulder, look over. Little twist, little back bend in there. Your left knee, push it down and pull it a little forward. It's like the heel coming forward that we've been working with to keep the muscles very strong and engaged. Add the quad stretch, left heel towards your seat. Reach back and hold on to the foot. Sometimes these little changes can be our difference to accessing a bit more in the pose. And then nice, slow, but full release. 
back around to all fours. Okay, step by step, second side. So if the hands are more towards the right, you'll have room to swing the left foot forward. Take up the width of your yoga mat. Leave your left heel on the mat, but turn your toes out. So you've got that nice broadening, a little more stretch on the inner thigh. We'll lift the back leg. And for me, lifting the back knee up, I've got to do so much work and strengthening in the front, or I'm sorry, in the back leg that uh, I can't release too much in the front leg, and that's helpful. Try going down closer to the ground, all the way to the forearms if it works. And then crawl back up to the hands and lower the back knee. And it's that little push of the back knee down and pull forward so you stay strong. Back heel can come in. You can do that quad stretch first. Stop there or walk the right hand even further off to the right. Then add the twist. Look over your top shoulder. You might surprise yourself. Hold on to the back foot. And slow release out, all the way back to all fours, cat and cow, and downward facing dog, tuck the toes, lift the head. All right, a couple more big poses. Come forward to plank pose and lie flat down on your belly. Do cobra, press through the hands and the feet, lift the chest. Okay, we're coming into bow pose. It's our belly down, back bend, holding our feet. And I wanna do it in a little different way. So from um, cobra, come down about halfway. So you're in, let's say, baby cobra. And coming into this bow pose with the chest staying lifted the whole time. Bend your knees, the feet can come to touch. So they help. And then try reaching your hands back like we usually start our classes in those belly down back bends, the shalabhasana, locust pose. And then from there, can you kind of wiggle around to hold on to your ankles? So coming at bow from that more lifted position, and then you get to fully release and press back to child's pose. From child's pose, sit upright, so you're sitting back on your heels and bring the knees together. And take both arms overhead, turn the palms forward, make your thumbs touch. Uh -huh. And then keeping the thumbs touching or close together, try to take the hands even further back behind you. Stretch through the armpit and then hold on to your elbows. Ideally, they're behind your head. And if you're like me, to do this, I've puffed my chest and belly way out, so now I'm gonna try to pull the belly back in. Arms back up, and release. Okay, so we're gonna go back into Cobra, and do that same position one more time. Press down through the hands and the feet, lift up into your taller Cobra. Try to feel open across the collarbone. And I've got my feet wide rather than together in this Cobra. 
and then let it go at least halfway down so like my navel finds the ground again. Bend the knees and take your feet close in. And I'm not saying that you won't have to give up a little bit more, but our thought is that we are trying to stay lifted and keep that lift of the shoulder up and back the whole time. Take the hands back. Wiggling around, maybe holding on to the ankles, maybe not. Doing our best. And then push. If you're holding on to your feet, push the feet into your hands. Exhale, lower it all the way down and push back to child's pose. Just a little second look there. Release here, release, 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 let it be. Using as much effort to release, to exhale, as we do on the inhale of the work. Okay, downward facing dog. I've got one more big pose for you. And then into our cool down. Downward facing dog. Make this a short downward facing dog. Walk your feet a little closer in and your feet and your hands, I'm sorry, a little closer back. And lift your chin and look forward. It's a little uncomfortable. And take your hands just slightly wider than you usually do. Lift up to your toes, lift your heels straight in the air so you're on tippy toes. And then from here, can you bend your elbows and bend your knees and make them connect? And then straighten it, it ends up being this uh, kind of like a push up, knees to the upper elbows and straighten. And I want you to do this three times if possible. Knees to the elbows and straighten, and then you'll probably realize I need to have my feet even closer in and get everything into a crouched position so that the knees can stay on your upper arms. And try balancing with your feet off of the floor in crane pose. Using the strength that we just found, Depth of strength in our hips from this practice, crane pose. Tap the feet back down, take it into that shorter stride dog pose. And then longer stride dog pose, full downward facing dog. Lower the knees. Cross at the ankles, have a seat with your legs straight out in front of you, arms up to the sky, and fold over your legs. If it had been a week or more since you did a full yoga practice, whew, you've made it. If it had been a day since you did the last yoga practice, fold into the release that comes here. And then change to lie down onto your back and pull your knees into your chest. and like really try to squeeze the knees in tight and then release, let it bounce away for a moment and do that a couple of times. Squeeze in and release and squeeze in and hold. 
Keep just the right leg there. Let the left leg go down onto the yoga mat and take it into a twist. Look straight ahead or out over the right hand, whatever feels right. Bring it across your center and switch. Hold on to just the left knee. Let the right leg go down and add a twist. Left knee towards the right side and extend the left arm. And bring it back into the middle one more time. If there's any last little bits that you would like to do here to unwind, one more pose, you are welcome to it. And then from your unwinding, find Shavasana. Lie down on your back for Shavasana or take a seat contemplation of meditation, you choose. Again, bringing us back to focus on that exhale, on the release. Slowly bring attention, awareness back into the body. Take your time to come back to a seated position. Keep your eyes closed or your gaze low. And then welcome palms together, thumbs to your sternum. Bow the head in, deepest of gratitude to yourself, each other, for this practice. Namaste.